In this section, we want to go into um, St. Peter, the authority and the primacy of St. Peter. Um, so we talked about the role of the Holy Spirit, right, in the life of the church, in that um, without the Spirit, the church is just buildings. It's just structure. It's just a lifeless shell, a body, right? It's like the moon. Without the sun, you would never see it. Um, um, it's just all it does is shine forth the light, right? Um, <clears throat> so here we have uh, now moving from the spirit, the soul of the church, right? The life of the church. Now we move into um, the leader. It's a leader who Christ has established uh, to lead it while he's gone, right? Um, so let's move back through that to St. Peter and his authority, who he is, where he gets authority, right? And we start by looking at this, that the authority Christ gave to Peter and his successors, that is the popes, is called primacy of Peter. Um, that's our key term, the primacy, prime, the first, first place of Peter. How a lot of times he's looked at as, as the greatest among equals in that Christ establishes the 12 apostles who have the same authority given by Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Remember uh, the night of the resurrection that Christ enters the locked room and he says the first words after the resurrection, peace whose sins you forgive are forgiven, right? He gives all the apostles the authority to do what only God could do. But we see him giving Peter a unique place in these established 12, right? That's called the primacy of Peter. So Peter's role is the leader of the early church, and it's clear in sacred scripture. It's Peter that announces uh, the need for them to replace Judas in Acts of the Apostles. It's Peter that speaks the first gospel message on the day of Pentecost um, for all the apostles. It's Peter who does the first miracle in the Acts of the Apostles after Christ has left on behalf of the church. And it's Peter, when the apostles are, are arrested by the Jewish leaders, it's Peter who stands up and speaks on their behalf. It's Peter who answers when Christ says, who do people say that I am to the apostles? Time and time again in scripture, we see Peter is the one that's speaking up on behalf of the apostles for Jesus, right? So we see clearly in Acts of the Apostles, written by Luke, that he's showing Peter is the leader. And we see in the Gospels that the Gospel writers are also showing that Peter is the spokesman. He is the leader of the Twelve. <laughs> so we see this role of Peter. Well, let's look a little bit more into it. St. Peter's office, his role, what he's supposed to be. Why does Jesus set him up as the greatest among equals? Why does he even have this leadership role? Well, let's look again at what Christ is and what he's establishing and how he's fulfilling the Old Covenant and the Old Testament. St. Peter's office is like the role of the prime minister in David's kingdom. See, in the Old Testament kingdom, the way that the kingdom was set up, remember the secondary features of the Vedic kingdom? Um, the king appointed 12 chief servants. Think of the president. He have his, has his cabinet, cabinet right? The, the office members, his close people that help him in his role as president, right? So too you had in the kingdom of David. This is how the kingdom was run. It had 12 chief servants, and he had a prime minister, the one that was above the 12. That's what the kingdom looked like in the Old Testament. Well, in the New Testament kingdom, then, if Christ is the new David, establishing the new kingdom, right, and, and he is the new king, well, then it makes perfect sense that if he is fulfilling the old, right, if he is becoming David the king, well, then he's going to do the same thing, right? Um, he's going to establish the 12, right, that we see him doing, his 12 servants, and he's also going to establish the prime minister, right? And we see that uh, in Matthew's gospel. In both cases, then, this prime minister role is identified by a sign, um, the keys to the kingdom. And we see that uh, in Matthew. First, let's look at the Old Testament and see if we can see evidence in Scripture. All right, here we go. Let's look at it. St. Peter's office, like the role of the prime minister in David's kingdom in Scripture. Let's look at Scripture and compare what Christ says and what the Old Testament talks about with this role of prime minister and see if we can get clues as to what's going on. So we go to Isaiah, and Isaiah is a prophet, right? And he speaks God's message. And so God tells Isaiah to go to this guy, the king's servant, who is in the role of prime minister. And this guy in the role of prime minister is abusing his role, right? So he tells Isaiah um, to say, hey, I'm going to throw you out of your office. I'm going to uh, get rid of you, and I'm going to put somebody in your place that's going to do the job right. Um, in other words, saying that this role of prime minister is not based upon a person, but it's an office um, with authority in the kingdom, right? So in that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim. I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over to him. In other words, this guy is going to be the prime minister now. And he says this, 
He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. He will be a father. What does that mean, right? What does that mean? The role of prime minister, fatherly over the kingdom. Wow, that's, that's a unique role, right? Um, and continue on. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. In other words, the sign of his office and authority. Is this guy the prime minister? He has the key to David's house. Who's David? The king. What's his house? The whole kingdom. He has the key to David's house, right? He has the authority given by David that's way up there, right? He has David's keys. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. In other words, right, he can speak and work and do things in the name of David the king, right? That's how high his authority is, right? He is the man underneath David that opens and shuts for the whole kingdom in the name of David with David's authority, right? That sounds pretty important, the role of prime minister, right? Now move on to Jesus. Does Jesus have anything comparable? Yes, he establishes the 12 apostles, right? Following the 12 ministers in the old kingdom and the 12 tribes in the old kingdom. But what else? Jesus replies to Simon Peter, son of Jonah. This is when he said, who do people say that I am? And, and Peter answered, you are the Christ. And he says, uh, my father revealed this. And now, Peter, now that you've shown and you've said that I am the Messiah, right? I am the fulfillment of the promises to David. Here's what Jesus says to Peter and the apostles. You just said that I am the new king? Well, let me tell you this. You are going to be Peter, and you are going to be the rock that I will build my kingdom, my church, and the gates of the enemy, Hades, will not overcome it. And get this line, right? Here it is. Let's highlight it. I will give you the key of the kingdom. Ah, sound familiar? I will place on you the key of the kingdom, the house of David. And Peter just said, you are the new David and the new king establishing David's kingdom. And Jesus says, I will give you, Peter, the key, right? I will give you the authority, right? We see a direct parallel. Jesus is saying, remember David's kingdom and the prime minister who had the awesome authority? There we go. And to make it even more clear, right after I give you the key, what does it say here? What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Now, when it comes to heaven, what is Jesus saying? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loosed. Whatever you close will be closed, and whatever you open will be opened. Jesus is clearly showing to the apostles and Peter, right when they say, you are David, the Messiah, the anointed one. You are making the new kingdom. Jesus says, okay, and Peter you're the new prime minister. Make sense, guys? It's as clear as day. You can't see the role of Peter and what Jesus is doing unless you're blind or you choose not to, right? It's right here. So let's continue on then. All right, we got it. We got it. Okay. So to say it one more time, in the Old Testament kingdom, the king appointed a prime minister for among the twelve. We see it and we saw it in Isaiah. In the New Testament kingdom, Christ is the king, the anointed one, the Messiah. And right when the apostles say that you are, he says, out of my twelve, Peter is the one that has primacy over the others. He's the one with the key and the authority that I give. Right? And in both cases, the prime minister is identified by a sign of his office, the keys of the kingdom. And if you look at the Vatican flag, if you look at the Vatican flag, it's yellow and white. And right there in the middle of the Vatican flag, keys. Keys of the kingdom, right? The sign of the office. Look at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, right above the doorway. The keys to the kingdom. This is important in the church. It's important for the whole kingdom of Christ, right? And it's important to know your Old Testament, that you really understand what Jesus is clearly doing. He is the king, and he has a prime minister. He's fulfilling the Old Testament kingdom. Again, if he doesn't do it, he's not fulfilling the Old Testament kingdom. And who are we to say that the New Testament has nothing to do with the Old? It has everything to do with the Old Testament. So there we have St. Peter's office, okay, and his role. So, continuing on then. The vicar of Christ is what St. Peter is called. Oops, let's go back. The vicar of Christ, his successors are called vicar of Christ because they possess this authority of the king Christ himself. What Isaiah said, right? You have the key of David's house. 
and whatever you bind shall be loosed. And he says it to Peter. So the Pope's authority, Peter's authority in the church, we recognize from Christ is one that is full, one that is supreme, one that is universal, right, in this way, in that Christ says this to Peter. And then we see in the church that all the apostles and the, and the evangelists, the writers in Scripture, are pointing this out too, that Peter has authority given by Christ over the twelve. Though there are twelve apostles, there is something unique about him. He is the king's guy that's supposed to be a father to the kingdom, right? And just like Peter says we need to replace Judas, and just like Isaiah says in chapter 22 that the role of the prime minister remains and each one is replaced after the next one is gone so too then we see the role of Peter after Peter's gone doesn't disappear if that was the case then Jesus kingdom would fall apart after one generation right but he establishes a kingdom just like the bishops and their successors a way for the, his vicar to continue on and they see it in the early church so lastly the papacy over the centuries The role of the papacy has evolved as political and social circumstances surrounding the church have changed. Right? Uh, he has more power over this and that and whatever else. The role of the Pope has changed in the past 2,000 years. But what has remained constant is that the papacy, the role of the Pope, St. Peter, is always and has always been from Peter to now the church's highest moral and doctrinal authority. Moral and doctrinal authority. When disagreement and conflict arise in the church, it is St. Peter, it is the Pope, who has the authority. And we just saw, where does he have the authority? From Christ, who is God, right? To resolve and clarify matters of faith and to maintain unity. Why? Why is this important? Because we're talking about a kingdom, right? And the king has gone away. And so he says, right, though there's going to be trial, there must be a way for there not to be chaos, for there to be order. Right? And he establishes a way. Peter and his successors, right? That makes sense? Very important, guys, for us to get that down. Peter, the primacy of Peter, the vicar of Christ, his role comes from Christ and continues for 2,000 years as that voice of unity and authority over the house of David or over the kingdom of the new David Christ.